Welcome back to the Wilson Combat Channel, where we invite you to subscribe and to ring the notification bell, which will let you know when new content comes out and you'll be the first on your block to see it. My name's Massa Yub. A while back, I did a video on the so-called shoot me first vest. There is a theory to the effect that gun people tend to gravitate towards certain types of clothing and that the bad guys will shoot them first in a dangerous scenario. If you notice I'm having trouble keeping a straight face, it's because as we said in that video, there's never been a case of someone being shot first because they were wearing a, a vest. We pointed out uh, various tactical uh, useful uses for that type of vest. And I've been asked to talk to you today about another garment, pants like these. Some call them tactical pants, cargo pants. I call them practical pants. Some call them BDUs, battle dress uniform, yo. I see them as practical, but of course, there are people who will call them shoot me first pants. Let's talk. Why cargo pants? Because they carry cargo. They carry stuff. And particularly for those of us who carry guns, it's because we're alert to other needs. We also carry flashlights. We also carry other assorted other equipment. That requires a place to carry it, and the more pockets you have, the more stuff is likely to be on your person when you need it. In all kinds of daily circumstances, you find that something you want or need right now isn't right there, and it's a pain in the butt to have to go look for it, find it, or do without it. In a life-threatening emergency, it can cost your life not to have it on your physical person or within arm's reach. And an adult lifetime of debriefing gunfight survivors has reaffirmed that for me. Tactical pants, let's look back at a little bit of history. They've been around for quite a while. This particular brand, EOTAC, was the one that really got me interested in it. I was one of the many advisors that the designer, Fernando Coelho, reached out to to say, what do we really need in a garment like this that'll make it useful for professionals? I was one of many, and I'm going to read off a cheat sheet because there's too many for me to remember. Super Dave Harrington, Clint Smith, Dean Caputo, Rob Hart, Freddie Blish, Dennis Chalker, Ken Hackathorne, Pat Rogers, Hilton Yam, Tim Lau, Larry Vickers, Eric Graves, Bill Jeans, Jim Smith, Bob Young, and Ed Stock. All that kind of think tank went into pants like these. Now, the EOTech brand is no longer available. And what I wear today to replace it is the 511 brand. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by 511 and I buy them in a 511 store or mail order just like you do. The rationale of them, you can get them in the, the different uh, fabrics. I generally in the summer wear seven ounce uh, cotton ripstop. Eight and a half ounce canvas works great in cold weather and is particularly useful if you're out tramping through the brush where there's a whole lot of thorns and thistles and such. I like that they are cut loose. You can see there's a good bit of drape to them. That means on a hot day, you've got air circulating and the clothing isn't sticking to your body, which used to really irritate me when I wore jeans instead. Because of the loose cut, lots more range of movement. It does not bind the body when you have to run, when you have to do a high kick, or when you might have to do something else strenuous. Above all, you've got those pockets. So let's look and We'll start at 12 o'clock and kind of kind of go around the body. First, the belt loops are cut generously, so they'll take everything from a dress gun belt like this one by Bullman to the very popular wilderness instructor type belts that are very comfortable to wear and infinitely adjustable and widely in use today. The belt loops are placed to allow for holsters. They're in the exact right spots for the holsters and the magazine pouches. You'll find the pockets are cut large. Now let's start talking about that. Before we get to the pockets, we've got the D-ring here to carry your car keys, car fob, and a carabiner. Much handier than having to dig into the pockets. As we come around, we have this regular pants pockets, which tend to be deep. Okay, most of us will carry a folding knife. Uh, this is the C60 I designed about 25 years ago now for uh, spider kill. Money clip, hotel key, comb, 
Cigarette lighter, pocket change. Lighter is always a handy thing, even if you don't smoke. Now, the cell phone pocket's on each side. You may choose to put a magazine there. In this case, a jet loader for the fastest way you can reload a, uh, a six-shooter. We've got down here on the side cargo pocket, speed strip for the backup gun. Remember, a gun without spare ammunition is a temporary gun. Eye drops needed by the elderly. Pillbox needed by the elderly. Lens wipes needed by anybody. And a Band-Aid and another lens wipe. I know a lot of folks carry their IFAX there, the individual uh, first aid kits. As we start coming around, now you see these pockets are cut very deep. You can see how far my hand gets into there. As we come around, the same thing. Some people prefer to carry the backup gun in the hip pocket. In this case, a Smith & Wesson uh, model 340 M&P 357, loaded with 38 plus P. Sticky brand pocket holster to keep everything stable. A handkerchief. And because I am old and because I am into redundancy, a spare handkerchief. Anything you think you might need, you want to have two of them. Does it make sense? Clint Smith's classic statement, two is one, one is none. Moving around the back, a big thing I like with the, with the pockets on these 511s. Any of us guys have found out sitting on a wallet is literally a pain in the butt. And more than that, it's been associated with long-term, uh, sometimes severe back injuries, sciatica, et cetera. These move over here to the side. As I sit down, I'm not sitting on it. It's sort of laying beside the buttocks. Much, much more comfortable. And I say that as having spent two days driving here to get to the studio. Wallet, of course. You'll find spare flashlight sits in the hip pocket right next to the wallet. The wallet holds it up stable. When you need the flashlight, that's right there. This is the old uh, mini mag, the cheapest, most popular of the uh, personal flashlights, uh, though certainly not the most powerful. Cell phone pocket, lots of uses for it. One more spare magazine for the SFT9 that I'm carrying today. And something I use multiple times every day, Surefire Wedge. Uh, the slickest little flashlight yet, I think. Anything you need, you need two of. Talk to anybody who's ever lost his wallet. I've had the good fortune not to, but it is a huge hassle. You can't get around in this society without identification, cash, and a credit, at least one credit card. So, spare wallet. Remember I told you about that comfortable loose drape of, of the trouser legs? They allow great flexion. They also allow you to strap things on your ankles that you might find to be of use. Over here, this is, the, this is my preferred choice for a spot for the IFAC. We've got uh, tourniquet, we've got Israeli battle dressing, we've got quick clot, and we have another spare pistol magazine. And over here, an ankle holster with a J frame. In this case, a Gunsight Custom Smith & Wesson 442 38 Special. For a pocket carry, this type of trouser is uniquely suitable. Okay, here we have a LCP 380 with a uh, Crimson Trace laser and the Galco pocket holster for it. This is how you get one back in the pocket holster without crossing your fingers with a uh, loaded gun, by the way. But the bottom line is, you can carry lots of stuff that you might need. You can carry it comfortably. And you are not necessarily marked as a cop or a gun guy. Do cops wear these? Yeah, of course. Do gun guys wear these? Yeah, obviously. So do paramedics. So do firefighters. So do outdoorsmen from hikers to fishermen to hunters. And so do kids. Have you noticed how many teenagers wear these things? They call them cargo pants. I call them stuff pants. You can put just about anything in here that you need, but one thing I'll ask you not to do. These are cargo pockets, but don't put snails in them because then you'll have escargot pockets. And on that note, I close what I hope will be my last fashion advice on the Wilson Combat Channel. We'll see you down the road.